Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is Saturday with God's Church of Love online. And we are reading Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. And we're going to follow with Proverbs chapter 7. Just a few verses. All right. Starting at verse 1. And we will stop at verse 3. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Wow. All right. Now, I know you. that pretty much speaks for itself, but just in case you get a little cloudiness on understanding, sometimes God gives visions, and Joel's going to explain that. Sometimes God gives visions and he'll show what's coming. And, you know, you can get a vision through a dream. You can get a vision, an op they call it an open vision, where you fall into a trance and you see the whole thing happening right before your eyes, wide awake, your eyes are wide open. But you're somewhere else and you're experiencing something. Or something happens in your mind. You get a mental picture and a whole scenario plays in your mind. You can either hear the dialogue or see the activity or both. Or you get a snapshot, a mental picture of something going on. So those are the three main ways you'll get visions. And we are going, and this is something we need to do. This is my little quick word of encouragement here, of admonishment. Get a tab, a tablet, a, a, a pad, writing pad, pen and paper. Keep it near your bed. You may be, it may begin that you may start waking up in the middle of the night from it, um, dreams that are very detailed. Write them down and then go back to sleep. Pray about it. Ask God for understanding, supernatural revelation. It's deep. Now, this is what I want you to listen to. We're going to Proverbs chapter 7 because this is a caution. When God is starting to do something in your life, oftentimes Satan will set, he will run interference. And this is what we have to be careful of. And y'all pray for me, because I am definitely trying to feel God on this right here. Uh, Proverbs chapter 7. And it reads, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, my Lord as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. Keep them real close. Wisdom and understanding. Whoever has their mic on, you guys, please mute your mics for the sake of the recording. That they may keep thee from the strange woman from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Now, for those of you who don't quite understand who the strange woman is, this is allegorical. The strange woman is any form of interference Satan tries to run your way through temptation, through enticement, through distractions, through alluring of your flesh, the desires and longings of your flesh that you don't need to be paying attention to. Hmm. 
things you don't need to entertain, things you don't need to, to set your eyes on. For example, Andrea was supposed to go somewhere today and have fun. She chose not to go because she found out they were going to include tarot cards and, you know, this kind of um, occultic activity, which she had no idea they were going to do. And she said, oh, no, I'm not going to that. Now, some of you need to have that kind of resolve. All right. Now, listen to this. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call thou sister, <laughs> and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. We already dealt with that. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and behold, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. And behold, oh, wait a minute, let me share this with you real quick. This is Pat's two cents. Listen, years ago, my first husband, my ex-husband, had an addiction. It was not addiction to drugs, nor was it to alcohol. It wasn't gambling, right? But his addiction was to pornography and prostitutes. He went and applied for some jobs. Now, when you're going to apply for a job, it's not a sinful thing to apply for a job. You got to take care of your household, right? Got to pay your bills. A man that doesn't work shouldn't eat. Okay, we get that. But it was where he applied for the job that was not wise. He did not keep wisdom and understanding close by. He allowed his flesh to dictate where he looked for work. And the worst place he could have looked for a job at was at a hotel that was right on the strip on a main thoroughfare where prostitutes hung out right at the very next corner. So he ended up getting a job as a desk clerk at a hotel. Now, you and I can put two and two together from there. He probably had fun every night when he before he came home. You have to understand, the Bible says, make no provisions for the flesh. You don't want to lean towards sin. You don't want to do anything that draws you near her corner. The corner of sin, the corner of enticements, the corner of sexual provision, of sinful provision, the corner of anything that will lead you away from the ways of God. And that's what he did. He went by her corner. That's what the Bible is saying here. He went by her corner, near her house. You hear what I'm saying? Mm, mm, mm. Passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with an attire of an harlot, I'm reading now, verse 10, and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. She's not where she's supposed to be. That's the bottom line. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impotent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day, have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, 
There's the allurement. There's the enticements. Let me finish reading. With carved works and fine linen of Egypt, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloes and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, for as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasted to the snare. A snare is a trap and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she has cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way, the way, the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Think on that for a minute. Think on it. What provisions are you making to fulfill the lust of the flesh? What plans are you laying out? Hmm? You notice some people, I haven't lost my train of thought. We're dealing with visions. Some people lose, I mean, some people get discouraged. Life hits them in the gut. They get, you know, it knocks the wind out of them. And they use the negative emotion, the negative activity, the feeling of hopelessness, the feelings of discouragement as an excuse to go to the store and buy a gallon of ice cream and down that bad boy in one sitting. Ugh. They use that excuse to eat a whole package of cookies. Some of them are really bad. They use that excuse to buy a bottle of liquor and chuckle up, chuckle up, chuckle up. Yeah. Look not on the wine when it moves itself right in the cup when it gives this color. No, don't get all caught up in all those enticements. When you get discouraged, when you get frustrated, when things get delayed, held back, or hindered, don't use those things as an excuse to turn back to the beggarly elements of life and sin. Because God is ready to do something in your life. See, Satan knows how to run interference. I don't know that much about football, so let's talk about basketball. Basketball or volleyball. When you run interference, when you see the opponent getting the basket, they're getting ready to shoot the hoop. Or you don't want the ball to get to their best shooter. So you send your best defense players around that shooter so that they can't even get the ball to that person. That's how you run interference. People who shoot pool, you ever watch Minnesota Fats? I'm just sharing this with you. It's a practical word, so, you know, fly with me on this. Uh, humor me. Minnesota Facts, when he played Willie Moscone, Willie Moscone was very, you know, he was a class act. He would just walk around like a total gentleman and concentrate and do his thing. Minnesota Facts, he's from the streets. He knows how to use his lips to take your mind off of what you're doing. He tries to push your buttons so he can get your emotions in the game. Get your emotions in the game, get you upset. You get distracted, you get distracted, you lose, baby because you lose your concentration, you lose your focus. And see, that's what a lot, that's what Satan does to a lot of God's people. He wants you to lose your focus so that when God shows you the vision, you can't see it. You can't see it plainly. 
You don't know what you're looking at because you're so caught up in the moment. The moment has nothing to do with the vision. Satan knows what he's doing. So here's Willie Moscone shooting pool with, 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 uh, with Minnesota facts. What's Minnesota fact? You know, yakety yak, yakety yak, yakety yak. Oh, yeah, you know, blah, 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 boom, 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 blah, 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 blah. I mean, I could imagine somebody gambling for 100 or $500 and the opponent, like, like Minnesota facts. Is sitting up there talking about, man, I saw your wife. Boy, I tell you, she doesn't look like nothing. Boy, how'd you end up with a messed up woman like that? You know, I was watching you the other day. I thought, boy, that man is pitiful. You really think you can shoot some pool? Man, you can't, boy, you can't pull a trick out. <laughs> you can't pull a trick out of a bag of, of trick or treat. You can't do, I mean, just, you know, you're so ugly. Your mama, you know, all these little crazy things to get you caught into the game emotionally where you want to fight, you want to cuss somebody out, you want to do something self-destructive, you want to do uh, harm to someone, you want to throw an adult temper tantrum, you want to tell somebody off in the worst way instead of focusing on how do I get the position to get to that next shot. You've got all seven shots laid out. You're getting ready to knock down the eight ball, but you got one more shot, and you have to make sure that the shot you choose gets it into the pocket so you can get your cue ball to get in position for the eight ball, for an easy shot, for an easy win. But if somebody's got your mind going and your emotions revving up and you're welling up with all these negative emotions and you're full of the defense mechanisms and your feelings are getting hurt, you're being offended and you're being bothered, distracted, angered, all of that. You're liable to miss Q. You forgot to chalk up your stick. You don't know what to do because you're so busy you got one eye on the game, and you got the other eye on your opponent, who you should not be paying any attention to. So your attention is divided. You might as well be looking at your shot cross-eyed. Think about that. You got to keep your mind. The, the Bible says people perish without a vision or without a vision, the people perish. You have to have a laid out plan, a mapped out plan, a strategy to get from point A to point B. Now, I know I'm a pool shooter, so you guys just deal with it. <laughs> but when I used to, I used to practice with the, the book by Willie Moscone on how to lay out position. And he said, you should know from your first shot to the eight ball where all your shots are going to be. It should all be lined up. So you got to stand there and walk around the table and look at it from all perspectives, high and low, far, near, right, left, so that you could get a real good idea as to what would be the most logical way to get around all the other guys' balls and get your position and make it simple. Keep it as simple as possible. Only use English when you need to. Don't put a spin on the ball if you can let, just let the ball roll. So you got to have all this laid out. But if you're busy, listen to yakety yak, yakety yak over there. You're going to lose your concentration. You even forget what your fourth shot was going to be. Oh man, you forgot. Then you didn't lay out your English so that you your position is right, so your position for that shot isn't lined up, and now you're blocked by his ball because you didn't do the position right, because you weren't concentrating. One eye on your opponent, one eye on the ball. Your mind is split. Your, your attention is divided. God's trying to talk to you. Picture this. God's trying to talk to you. He's trying to share something with you. You're so caught up in what so-and-so said on your job. And you are teetotally pissed. You are eating fire. You're burning from within. 
fire shut up in your bones and it ain't the Holy Ghost fire. You ticked off. You ready to get up in somebody's you know what? Because of their mouth. Because of their attitude. What does their attitude have to do with your day at work? Don't ever let anybody else steal your joy. Don't let that person have that kind of power over you. Jesus gave you all authority and power over all the works of the enemy. Take that authority. Stay focused. Keep your ear peeled to the heart of God. Keep your mind stayed on him, his word, his righteousness. Don't get caught up in nee, 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 nee nonsense. See, a lot of you, God's trying to let you know what your calling is. God's trying to let you know what he has planned for you down the road. You're so caught up. So caught up that you can't hear him. I'm going to do a quick exercise. Let's see what I can do here. Okay, let's call, we'll call some racket. This is your life. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let's put this bowl. My little, yeah, doing my little, uh, this is what I was using. Got all my little stuff in here, doing my little, uh, you decorating. Okay, listen to this. Now, check this out. Here, here you are trying to hear God's word. You're trying to hear what his voice is saying to your spirit. You're trying to be led by him. God wants to show you a vision so he gets your attention with his voice. And that's what's going to start happening. So y'all get ready. Now listen to this. So here you are. God is talking. So let me just act like I'm on the voice for right now. You know, just human. And then this is going to be all the distractions of Satan. Messing with your mind. Messing with your discouragement. Messing with your doubts, your fears, your insecurities, your 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 uh, tendencies to lean to your own understanding, to get caught up in sexual desires and emotional desires and distracting and eating all the wrong stuff, running to the store when you should have been still reading the word, but you're running to the store to get your pacifier because you're upset. And here you are, all your distractions. Now, can you hear what I'm saying to you? You can hear what I'm saying to you. I want you to go around the corner. I'm going to show you a vision. Drive up the hill, and I will talk to you there. Now, do you know what I just told you to do? No. Because you, get, you let the vicissitudes of life jack you up and totally steal your attention. Totally distract you, like Minnesota Fats and Willie Moscone. Totally distract you. You miss Q, you don't put chalk on the stick. You forgot what your position is because you're so busy concentrating on the nonsense that's being shoved at you so that they can win the game on, on default. Yeah. And here you are trying to hear from God. You're trying to walk with him. You're genuinely trying to walk with him. Genuinely trying to follow him. But you're so caught up in life and it's mess. Life and all the nuisances and all the aggravations that come with it. You're caught up in that when all you have to do is get up out of the rain and get inside, sit down and hear what God has to say to your spirit. But you have to be still and know that he is God. You're looking for him to thunder to you through through the lightning and, oh, so-and-so, I want you. No, no, he ain't going to shout over your nonsense. Half the time, he's all, a lot of times he speaks with that still, small voice. And if you got all that noise going on and all that clutter in your life and on your mind and everything taking up your emotions, you're not going to hear him. Now, what I said was, I'm going to show you a vision, but first I want you to drive up the hill and I want you to meet me there 
I'm going to show you something. I'm going to talk to you. You, you couldn't have heard that. You got too much going on. What you got going on in your life that's all that important that you can't lay it aside? Does God have your attention? Listen, let me share this with you. You got to ask God constantly to open your ear, open your heart, open your mind, keep you sensitized. I was, uh, I was given a, 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 by email a bill. <clears throat> I have a, um, a web hosting company that's a Christian company. And because I was small, I was just a little widow, just trying to do a little ministry. They let me have my website for free. So that I don't have to pay them a monthly thing for the the web hosting. I'm not doing anything with it. I mean, it's basically just sitting there. But here's the thing. After two years, they send me a bill. And I'm I'm calling them saying I've never been billed before. So what happened? I wasn't even alarmed that this was gonna change. So they contact, you know, they say, okay, we're gonna get back with you. I'm figuring the next day. That's where my mind was. They'll call me the next day. I forgot yesterday was Friday. So I'm thinking, okay, they're going to call me the next day or they'll email me the next day. And I'm getting ready to, to uh, turn my computer off and go back to bed. I'm sleepy. In my spirit, I feel, turn on your email. They've sent you something already. Really? That fast? Couldn't have been no more than 15 minutes. So I turn, I go to my email and there it is. Voila. They sent me something, let me know they're going to discuss it with their uh, supervisors or whatever, and they'll get back with me. Then I'm sitting there. Now I'm waiting. I want to go to bed, but I'm waiting. Lord, can I go to bed or do I have to stay up and wait till, till closing time and wait to see if they're going to send me a message? It was like a piece. Go on to bed. I went on to bed, got up around six. I looked on my email. They hadn't sent me another message. So now I know to wait till Monday. But do you see what I mean? How sometimes, and, and when I responded to their, to their uh, message, they thanked me for giving them such a prompt response. God knows how to give you favor if you have an ear to hear. Now, what if I had gone to bed and not gotten back to them till Monday? They might have thought, oh, this chick is shucking and jiving. Let's send her another notice and, you know, it's over. You know, we're not even going to consider. But God made sure I responded within minutes. When I didn't even expect to get a response from them within a day or two. So... My point to you is there are times when you have to have an ear. God will tell you sometimes when you're getting ready to go to the store to do something normal. You're not doing anything wrong. And he'll tell you, stay by the phone. You feel like, I don't know why I got to stay by the phone. Why do I have to stay by the phone? And something important will come. And it might be only that one attempt the person tries to reach you. And you could have missed out on a blessing. Had you gone to the store? See, you got to have an ear to hear. You got to yield everything, your schedule, your whole day's routine, your habits. It's not just about not sinning. It's about removing the clutter. When you feel the Holy Spirit quickening you on the inner man, saying, stop it. Stop what you're doing. Stop. I need your attention. And you don't know what you're giving him attention for. Is he going to give me a vision? Is he going to tell me something? Is he going to warn me about something? What's going on? Nothing frantic. I remember one day the Lord said, stop. He didn't say it literally. I felt the stop in my spirit. Sit down. Something's about to go down. And I'm feeling, you know, sobered right now. It's like, okay, uh, this is serious. When I sat down and got still, the whole thing played in my mind within a month. 
They're going to have all the cars that are inoperative towed away within a month. At that time, I didn't have the money to even buy a little for sale sign. Didn't have the way to get to a store to get a for sale sign. And I'm like, God, I need you to send somebody to buy my car before they take it. At least I can benefit from that because I couldn't afford to get it fixed. So sure enough, <laughs> my husband's best friend gives me a call, says he's going to drive up and pick up. He's in the neighborhood. He's going to pick up um, uh, the battery charger that they let me see if it's still working. I told him it never did work. So they came. They picked it up. He had a, He had two guys with him. One guy, this was about two weeks after that prayer. One guy said, uh, I mean, he introduced the two guys. One was a friend. One was his brother from Arizona. See, sometimes the vision is not always about a calling. Sometimes the vision means you got to be available because a blessing is coming. Don't get busy right now. So sure enough, what happens? The brother gets out the car, comes up to the driver's seat and says, can I look at your car? I've always wanted a town car. I'm like, sure. So he's looking at it. I'm telling him what needs to be fixed and all that it might cost him. And he said, how much would you sell it for? I'll have the money for you next Monday. Okay. So I gave him the price. He went for it. Didn't even try to haggle me down. He knew I was giving him a real good deal. I sold it for 3000 less than what I would have tried to get had it been in better running condition. But I knew he was going to have to fork up a couple of thousand dollars to get it roadworthy. So that's what happened. He had the car towed to Pasadena to the mechanic, got it worked on, paid less than $2,000 to get it fixed, paid me, paid me before he took it. Before he took it, his brother went with me to AAA. We switched up all the paperwork, the pink slip, got all that done. Bam, just like that. That car was gone 12 days before they were going to start sweeping the streets and getting rid of all those, uh, you know, unmoved cars. In cars that were broken down, so to speak, stranded cars. Yeah, because I live in a gated community and they're real strict. You know how HOAs are. Now, here's the thing. God let me know. I didn't, this was really a trip. I did not know they were going to tow the cars away. A week. What was it? I'm trying to think of the, of the time. It was about... Maybe the two days after the man said he was going to buy my car. He hadn't gotten the money to me yet, but he said he was going to buy it. And his brother called me and said he was going to come up and bring the money. He had it. That day or the day after, I got my money. I also got a little flyer hanging on my doorknob announcing the tow away. God had told me about the tow away before they did. There are so many troubles, so many things in life that can trip you up and catch you by your blind side that can pull the rug out from under you and have you tumbling down a hill and all hell starts breaking loose because you didn't hear the first thing that he wanted to say to you because your life is full of clutter and noise and emotional up upheavals caught up in stuff, the cares of this life. Instead of casting all your care on him, because he cares for you, and leaning your ear to his bosom, you're leaning to your own understanding and handling things according to what you hear, see, feel, and touch, and what you understand. 
according to your own understanding. So if God has a blessing coming your way, if God has made a way where there is no way, you don't even get that because you're not consulting with him. You're not asking him. You're not seeking him. You're not giving him your ear, your attention, your focus. No, you're focusing on the problem, on the waves, on the noise, on the roar, on the lightning, on the thunder. No, you don't have time for God because you're in a trick bag. You're in a quandary. You got to handle this. No, you don't have to handle nothing. If you cast all your care on him, trust me, he'll handle it. No sweat off your back, no stress, no worry, hmm. no crashes, no explosions, no destruction, nothing but blessing, deliverance, provision, protection, peace. Write the vision and make it plain. But you got to hear the vision. You got to see the vision. Make time for the vision, y'all. You have no idea what that vision is going to do in your life. The vision may be involving your calling. The vision may involve other people's lives and how you're to be a blessing to those people. The vision just may be something practical, like put $10 more in your bank account by tomorrow. Something's going to come out and it's going to bounce. The vision could be go back and check the seat you just got out of. Feel around, like my pastor said, the Lord nudged him. Feel around the seat before you get out. And he feels around the seat and voila, lo and behold, his wallet that someone else would have benefited from. Had he not had an ear to hear the unction of God. Do you have an ear to hear? Hmm? God tries to make our lives easy. We are the ones that get in his way. Pray. This is how you have an ear. Pray constantly. Read his word. You don't have to be on your knees all day. Come on, you got to work. You got to function. You can be talking to God while you're doing the dishes. Talking to God, why are you taking out the trash? Lord, please remind me to do so and so. Don't let me forget. Please, please. And the whole day is going, you're so busy, and you but you pray. And what happens? All of a sudden, a, th a thought thunders in your mind. Handle that. Oh, I forgot. Thank you, Lord. And here you are, the last hour, but you got time to get it done. Pray, read your word. That sensitizes your spirit to the voice of God. You may be bored by what you read. You may not understand everything your eyes see, but your spirit is still getting fed. God's word does not return to him void. It accomplishes what it's set out to do. Even if you don't know what it means, It'll still do what it's supposed to do in you. Read his word. Be around God's people. Seek godly counsel. Don't lean to your own understanding. Proverbs, I think it is, I may be wrong, but there's a scripture in the Bible that says, and there is safety in the multitude of counsel. Get, get godly counsel whenever you can. But sit your behind down, put your light in park for a minute, and give God time to talk to you through prayer, through the word, through counsel, and the preach word of God. He'll even talk to you through songs. He'll give you a song. I was asking God, I can't tell you how many times I've asked God, am, am I done with the YouTube channel? And all of a sudden, Yolanda Adams is flooding my mind. Don't give up on you. I forget the name of the song, but don't give up on you. It was like, keep going, keep pushing, keep doing. Don't give up on you. The dream is real. Don't give up. Keep doing it. 
I get that through song. Song just comes to my head and it won't go away. God talks to us in many ways. I pray that you have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God has to say to his church. God bless you. I hope that helps. Develop an ear so you don't miss out on your blessings, so you don't miss out on the visions that God has to give to you, so you don't miss the warning signals. God bless you.